For more than a century in California's Central Valley, oil fields have shared rich farmland that feeds millions of Americans. From the many produce farms here comes much of America's grapes and citrus and tomatoes. And it's where millions more consumers around the world get their pistachios and almonds. Some say with oil wells seemingly everywhere, it's no surprise that water here smells and tastes a bit like oil. Particularly when in a time of record drought in California, a lot of the water being used to irrigate California's crops these days is treated oil wastewater that comes from one of the biggest oil fields in the United States, the Kern River oil field of Chevron, where 10,000 oil wells pump crude from the ground around the clock, producing 70,000 barrels of oil per day, and 10 times that amount in wastewater treated wastewater that Chevron says is a safe and vital lifeline sold at low cost to farmers who are otherwise running out of natural groundwater here. The recycled oil wastewater, or what Chevron calls produced water, is mixed with natural groundwater and diluted in holding ponds like this one, and then flows along canals to irrigate 45,000 acres of crops in this region around Bakersfield, 100 miles north of Los Angeles. When CCTV recently emailed Chevron headquarters in Houston requesting a tour of the Kern River oil field facility, we were instead forwarded a short public relations film about the long history of the oil fields here that began producing crude oil way back in 1899. Chevron lauding its modern oil producing technology here today that's called steam flooding that thins out heavy crude oil and makes it easier to pump much more of it out of the ground and a lot of wastewater with it. In steam flooding, steam is injected near the base of a heavy oil reservoir through an injection well. As the injected steam comes into contact with the oil, it transfers heat to the cold, heavy oil, reducing the viscosity of the oil and making it more mobile. Chevron credits steam flooding for producing major new supplies of domestic oil in the U.S., helping California and the United States become more energy independent and for benefiting California's economy by creating new jobs. However, what Chevron's PR film does not address is what some call the downside of oil production here in the Central Valley, the chemicals found in oil wastewater used by farmers here. And hoping for a closer look at what goes on here, CCTV emailed Chevron headquarters to ask if someone could meet us here and explain what chemicals are in the produced water. Chevron declined our request. So under California law, oil companies like Chevron are required to post warning signs as Chevron has around its facility like this one that warns detectable amounts of chemicals known to the state of California to cause cancer, birth defects, or other reproductive harm may be found in and around the facility. As we filmed Chevron's oil field from public roads here, we were followed by a guy in a white vehicle taking our picture with his smartphone. He introduced himself as a security agent for Chevron. Help you? Thank you, sir. My name's Mike Kirsch. I'm a journalist with CCTV, Chinese television. Chinese television? Okay. Um, what is the possibility of getting a spokesperson to talk about oil wastewater's impact on farm crops out here? You would have to talk to our PR? I've sent an email. I got an email back from PR in Houston. There's nobody here locally that can address the issue? There's one in Bakersfield, yeah. Who would that be? I can give you a phone number. What's the number, sir? I'll give it to you. Okay. But he didn't give it to me. Rather, he took my phone number and said Chevron would call me. But they didn't call back. In addition to Chevron denying us access, another independent oil company nearby ordered CCTV to leave this oil field that we had accessed from open roads around the facility. Oil fields are off limits. You know, unless you get permission to uh, come on property to, to film. Okay, because there's just a lot of people that are saying that they're trying to get more information about the oil wastewater that's being used on the crops, and there's not a lot of information out there. I understand that, but still you have to go to the company to get any information. But the companies are not obligated to... That's correct. Oil companies under state and federal law are not obligated to inform the public at large about what chemicals they're using that may be contaminating groundwater. 
though they are required by law to conduct routine tests on the water in order to obtain permits to drill, the results of which must be reported to the U.S. government's Environmental Protection Agency. Also unwilling to discuss oil wastewater here are many of the dozens of farmers using this water who are not obligated to inform the public which crops in this region are grown with oil wastewater supplied by Chevron. This region home to several large corporate farms supplying consumers across the U.S. and around the world. At one facility, the security guard told us not to film. You need to read the law, sir, because this is a public road. I'm doing my job. Well, but had to be reminded we were filming legally from a public road. I'm doing my job. Let me do my job. Thank you, sir. The identities of farmers and farms receiving treated oil wastewater here were made public recently after the Los Angeles Times, under the Freedom of Information Act, forced the local water district here to release this list of more than 300 farmers and farms. One of them, a global produce giant producing Halos, one of America's top-selling citrus products. Though it did not respond to CCTV's email requests to discuss treated oil wastewater. Also refusing to discuss oil wastewater are many of the migrant farm workers here, like this woman who said that as a single mother with children to support, she did not want to risk losing her job for commenting about the issue. Until now, there have been mixed signals about how safe this water really is. While Chevron claims it is safe for irrigation, many environmental groups are warning it's not. Among them, the nonprofit Water Defense, founded by actor Mark Ruffalo. His colleague and chief scientist Scott Smith has vast experience when it comes to testing contaminated water. Smith has collected samples of toxins in water at more than 60 major oil spills and other hazardous chemical spill sites around the world, dating back to the catastrophic British petroleum oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico in 2010. And when Smith recently conducted tests on treated oil wastewater here in California. This is just like in the Gulf of Mexico. It's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. Only this, in the Gulf of Mexico, they didn't take the oil spill and use it to irrigate the vegetables and fruits that people eat every day. This actually is far worse than the BP spill because it's ongoing, it's every day. He says he found compounds toxic to humans, including acetone and methylene chloride, used in industrial solvents, along with, of course, oil itself. In fact, Smith says toxic chemicals found in oil wastewater canals here were four times higher in concentration than those, for example, that he found during a recent ExxonMobil oil spill in the state of Arkansas. That was declared a federal disaster in which ExxonMobil was fined nearly $3 million. So Smith minces no words when describing just how dangerous the chemicals found in this oil wastewater, he says, truly are. The chemicals we found cause cancer and negatively impact your health. And the chemicals we found, if, if you or I owned a business and were spilling these chemicals, we'd be fined and possibly be charged criminally. Period. End of statement. That's all you need to know. And Smith says Chevron's public relations films lauding the benefits of treated oil wastewater for irrigation are, in his opinion, as irresponsible as old tobacco industry PR films back in the day. More doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. The tobacco industry telling the public how most doctors found smoking was safe, so safe that Santa Claus smoked, and that even children should get an early start smoking, albeit with candy cigarettes, to be just like dad. Look at the tobacco companies and their PR films about cigarette smoking not causing cancer being good for your health. It's, it's the same thing. Still, California's highest elected leader, Governor Jerry Brown, has credited recycled oil wastewater for saving farmers, he says, and California's huge farm-based economy from a drought that, if it continues, could cost the Central Valley's agricultural industry $1.7 billion in lost crops not to mention possibly costing the valley nearly 15,000 jobs. Today I'm declaring a drought emergency in the state of California. We are in a, a unprecedented, very serious situation and people should uh, pause and reflect on how dependent we are on the rain, on nature and one another. 
Governor Brown declined an interview request from CCTV. When his office was asked if oil wastewater posed a threat to consumers and to California citizens working in and around the farms utilizing oil wastewater, Brown's office, rather than answering, referred CCTV to the state's Natural Resources Agency, which then referred CCTV to the State Water Resources Control Board, which then said it would soon respond to CCTV's inquiry regarding the safety and health concerns of local citizens and consumers, but to date has not. Though water officials with the state of California in previous news reports have stated the water is safe for irrigation of crops. Something's wrong with this practice. Tom France is a third generation almond farmer and retired school teacher. He says he'll never use treated oil wastewater on his crops. Presently he uses natural well water, but it is running low. Still, Fran says he'd let his orchard die before using treated oil wastewater because he says there are simply too many unknowns about the chemicals that may threaten crops and the people who pick them and consume them. CCTV conducted what is obviously a very unscientific analysis of the water here, scooping up a sampling of it from this canal for France to smell at face value. It stinks. It, uh... You know, it's got the aroma of uh, fresh asphalt. Would you put that on your salad? Yeah, well, directly I wouldn't drink or eat this water, of course. And we know there's some chemicals in there that uh, may or may not cause cancer in people if you're exposed to it long term. That kind of France explains that oil wastewater is filtered and diluted with natural groundwater in wastewater ponds like this one before it's moved on to water crops. What we're looking at right here in front of us are the wastewater ponds. You can see the steam coming off because even on a warm day like right now, uh, there's still the water's so hot that it's steaming. Uh, when the wind shifts our direction, you, you get this awful smell of asphalt and hydrocarbons. So this, this water, this water that has been mixed with oil water... Uh, Juan Flores tells CCTV that he grew up here as a migrant worker who has since become a community activist against the use of oil wastewater on crops here. It's not natural, but the oil industry would always reply, but it's legal. Now, being legal doesn't make it right. As a Mexican-American, Flores says the oil industry and the state of California are blatantly ignoring the possible health risks to migrant workers. For example, he quotes state health statistics about children with increasing cases of asthma, for example, that he blames in part on new oil wells and fracking operations that have been approved by the state of California to go up near schools. For example, around this elementary school are three different oil operations just a couple hundred yards away and right next to a local organic community garden where migrants are trying to grow chemical-free produce for themselves and their families. For example, look at these community members. They're working right now right here at the land, and their background is an oil pump. It's oil pumps. And look at the children at the school. They're being exposed to this as well. Right next to the school. Something that many Americans um, connect with. They Environmental attorney Madeline Stano of the Center on Race, Poverty, and the Environment recently sued the state of California on behalf of a young student and asthma sufferer from this school that's been surrounded by three different oil wells in recent years. Right now in California, under the law, we can't act, I cannot access as an attorney who's putting what produced water from oil and gas where. Uh, Demanding the state of California and the oil industry be required to inform the public at large what hazardous chemicals are being released by oil companies, whether in oil wastewater or in the air. Air quality in the Central Valley, by the way, she says, considered among the worst air pollution in the United States. Stano says oil companies are impacting the health of thousands of Hispanic migrant workers in towns here like Shafter. Many workers here barely getting by on low wages with no health insurance. Many only affording to shop for stuff that costs less than a dollar at the 99 cent store in town. Or next door, there's the newly opened 97 cent store. Here in Shafter, they say they work hard in the fields for years as the world seemingly passes them by. Families here are considering themselves lucky if they can save up enough money to treat their daughter to a proper quinceanera. 
Collectively, they say citizens here view California Governor Jerry Brown as a politician supporting big oil over the well-being of local citizens threatened by the unknown impact of oil wastewater. If this would be Beverly Hills, we wouldn't see no oil pumps here at all. And with regards to the oil industry's increasing use of fracking around farmlands here, Governor Brown was recently sent a stinging message by environmentalists in a short public awareness video demanding that Brown stop oil fracking operations around farmland. Here in California, 75% of fracking is done around our farmlands. The same lands where we grow most of America's lettuce, oranges, and tomatoes is being pumped with hundreds and hundreds of toxic chemicals. Who the frack wants to eat that? Jerry Brown, you hungry? Many people living in fracked communities or communities with a lot of oil extraction have already seen the signs that the industry puts up themselves that says toxic chemicals, cancer causing, birth defects, enough to prove that there are real risks here. What is the solution to the drought? We have the governor requiring residential uh, consumption to decrease. Uh, the idea of your nice little green grass, getting lots of water every day, uh, that's going to be a thing of the past. That's what the state has focused on. Don't water your lawn, take a shorter shower, don't fill up your pool this summer. Um, you know, and if you look at the total water consumption in the state of California, those things, that residential sector, makes up a fraction of what industrial agriculture and the oil and gas industry use. We are allowing both of those industries um, to use a lot, a lot, a lot of fresh water um, that becomes wastewater that we can't reuse again without risks. I really believe that the buck stops with the governor. Though so Governor Brown, for the moment, seemingly has public support across many other parts of the state and the country for allowing farmers to use oil wastewater because, frankly speaking, he says there's more wastewater in many cases than what Mother Nature is currently providing water-starved Californians. We're in an historic drought, and that demands unprecedented action. Unprecedented levels of treated oil wastewater now being used by California farmers. What long-term impact oil wastewater may have on the environment and on those who work in these fields and the millions more who consume this produce, seemingly overshadowed by California's desperate need for water after four devastating years of drought.